Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our final March virtual coffee break. We are continuing uh, National Nutrition Month with a presentation from Paige Weiner. She is a dietetic intern here at Marshfield Clinic Health System coming in from us from UW Green Bay. Um, we are pleased to welcome Paige. Hi, and good morning, everyone. Um, like Nathan said, my name is Paige Weiner. I'm a dietetic intern here at Marshfield Hospital in Marshfield, Wisconsin, and I'm on my week five out of week 10 um, of my 10 week rotation here at the hospital. So I'm learning lots about healthcare and different disease states and conditions that patients can have. And I'm honored uh, to be here today presenting. So let's get started. All right, so I have a presentation here about sodium and your health. Let me pull it up. All right, so I wanted to present on sodium because during my time here at the hospital, I have noticed that a lot of people um, have the condition of hypertension, otherwise known as high blood pressure. And um, hypertension can kind of lead to a lot of other conditions. Also, just watching our sodium and our salt intake in general is always a good idea. So to get started, I just wanted to touch a little bit on what the difference between salt and sodium is. And sometimes uh, we get in the habit of using them interchangeably, but they are different. So just a general definition for salt is that it's a crystal-like compound that's abundant in nature and we find it in many places. And sodium is a mineral and it's also one of the chemical elements found in salt. So salt is very high in sodium and that's why we say to watch your sodium and also watch your salt intake. So how much sodium should we have? Uh, the recommended daily value of sodium is about 2300 milligrams. And this might be different for those who have uh, been diagnosed with high blood pressure before. Um, sometimes the doctors or the dietitians have different recommendations for you, but for the normal um, person who doesn't have hypertension, it's recommended to stay around 2300 milligrams a day for your intake. And just for reference, uh, one teaspoon of salt has 2,300 milligrams in it. So we wouldn't technically just eat a teaspoon of salt, but salt is found in many places and we tend to season our foods with salt very often and this can um, add up for our sodium intake for the day. So why is it important to watch our sodium intake? In the big grand scheme of things, we should watch our sodium intake to prevent high blood pressure, also known as hypertension, like I said before. So sodium attracts water in our body and a high sodium diet draws water into our bloodstream. Um, when we have an increase of blood in our bloodstream and like a lot of water, it also causes our heart to pump harder. And when this remains elevated over a long period of time, this is when we're diagnosed with hypertension or high blood pressure. So we don't really want our heart to have to work harder. Um, that's why it's important to watch our sodium intake. Also because uncontrolled high blood pressure, when you have it for a long time, it can uh, raise the risk of many conditions that are also not so fun. So these include heart attack, stroke, heart failure, and kidney disease. So ultimately, this is why it's important to watch um, our sodium and our salt intake each day. So where would we find um, sodium on a nutrition label or how would we know how much we are having in a day? So I put this is a nutrition label with the nutrition facts from a Campbell's uh, can of soup. So just normal chicken noodle soup. And as you can see here, um, it says on the label that sodium is 890 milligrams, but then if we look over under nutrition facts, there's 2.5 servings of soup in one um, can. So the serving size is about half a cup. So that means in the half a cup of the chicken noodle soup, there's 890 milligrams. Now, I don't know a lot of people who only have a half of a cup of soup when they are um, opening a can of soup and having it. And so if you were to have this whole can of soup, you would be consuming 2,225 milligrams of sodium for this one can. So how I figured that out is there's 2.5 servings of soup in this container. 
And with the nutrition label, it says there's 890 milligrams per serving. So 890 times 2.5 is that number of 2,225 milligrams. So if we are trying to stay under that 2,300 milligrams of sodium or salt a day, that means that this can of soup would ultimately be the only kind of sodium or the only amount of sodium we have for the day, which is pretty unrealistic because sodium is found in a lot of foods. And if you um, tend to use the salt shaker and put salt over your food, then um, you're going to have an even higher sodium intake for the day. So just some foods that are high in sodium. When I'm talking to patients a lot during my rotation here, I realize that um, some don't know uh, where the sources of sodium are coming. Um, and so I just thought it'd be nice to put it on here, a good reminder. So canned soups, like we saw on the slide before, are high in sodium. Also processed foods, like frozen dinners, because they have to be preserved in order to last longer. So they tend to be higher in sodium. Um, cold cuts and cured meats. So this includes sandwich meat, hot dogs, and also brats. So brats are a big one here in Wisconsin, I feel like. So that's something to watch um, with your sodium intake. And then also cheese being a big one here. Us Wisconsinites, we love our cheese, but it can also be high in sodium. So just watching um, those intakes. And then also pizza, again, if it's frozen, tends to be higher in sodium because it is processed. There's some preservatives on it. And then pickles and olives are also a high um, they have high sodium content, so something to watch for. We don't have to eliminate these foods completely, but just be mindful that they are high in sodium. And maybe if you're going to have a brat for lunch, you have something that's lower in sodium for supper to just kind of um, make sure you don't have too high of a sodium intake for the day. Also, some snack foods that are quite popular that are or can be high in sodium are pork rinds, pretzels, and also microwave popcorn with the butter and the extra excuse me, salt on it. So I don't want to talk about what we can't eat, but I would rather talk about what is good for us and what we can eat. So something we use here is called the DASH diet. Um, it's very popular with uh, educating for the heart healthy diet and lowering sodium. So DASH stands for dietary approaches to stop hypertension. And what it does is it focuses on eating healthier fats, more fruits and vegetables, and also whole grains. So it tends to focus on foods that are usually lower in sodium um, and have a lot of vitamins and minerals in them and offer you a lot of nutrition. So um, with it being high with fruits and vegetables, it's naturally low in sodium. So this is just something to follow. Um, keep in mind throughout, too, I really try to look at the DASH diet, even though I don't have hypertension. But just a good um, diet, if you will, to follow and be mindful of. So let's go into more of the details of the DASH diet. So like I said, it focuses more on fruits, vegetables, whole grains, nuts, seeds, and legumes, and healthy fats. So it's suggested that you have four to five servings of fruits and vegetables a day. So four to five servings of vegetables a day, and then four to five servings of fruits a day. And I know this can sound very overwhelming and um, like too much, but I have some little tips and tricks that I wrote down and just um, things to keep in mind as you go along and if you're trying to be mindful of this diet. So with vegetables, fresh and frozen vegetables are always a good choice and canned vegetables are good too. Um, just watching to make sure they don't have a high salt or sodium content in them. And if you do uh, get canned vegetables, it's always good to rinse them off underwater, you can get about a third of that sodium content off of there. Um, and then uh, warming them in the microwave or over the stove in some clean water. That doesn't have added salt in it. And uh, when we're looking for vegetables in the store, you can also look for labels that say low sodium or without added salt on them. And just for reference, one serving of vegetables is a half a cup of cut up or raw or cooked vegetables, excuse me. So this could be like cut up carrots, um, cucumbers, anything, uh, tomatoes, if that's something you like. Um, otherwise, it's one cup of raw leafy green veggies. So this would be like your lettuces, um, kale, spinach, things like that. So moving on to fruits, again, four to five servings per day. 
Fruit is really good to have in the morning with your breakfast. Um, some tips to getting more fruit in your diet. You can put it with yogurt. Um, you can have it as a snack. Um, mixing it in a smoothie is another good way. So one serving of fruit is one medium piece of fruit. So a banana or an orange, an apple. Otherwise, it's half a cup of fresh frozen or canned fruit or four ounces of fruit juice. And when you're looking for fruit juice, you want to Look for 100% fruit juice or the kinds lower in sugar. Those will be better for you as well. So moving on to lean meat, poultry, and fish. Um, it's recommended to have six one-ounce servings or fewer a day. So when we're talking about this, we want to trim the, the skin away and the fat from the poultry and the meat. And then good ways to prepare it that would be a little healthier would be to bake it, broil it, grill, or roast it instead of um, frying it in oil or butter. Heart-healthy fish include salmon, herring, and tuna. So these are going to be high in nutrients and lower in fat and also sodium if you choose not to season them with any salt or seasonings high in sodium. Um, so one serving of this uh, lean meat, poultry, or fish would be one egg or ounce one ounce of cooked meat, poultry, or fish. So just watching the weight on those. And then moving on to low fat dairy, two to three servings a day. So when we say low fat, you wanna look for skim, 1% or even 2% milk, kind of staying away from that whole milk. It will um, maybe not necessarily be lower in sodium, but definitely lower in fat. And that's something to um, always keep in mind too. So, also limiting the, reg the amount of regular and fat-free cheese is a good idea because these can be high in sodium like I stated in the slide prior. So one serving of low-fat dairy is one cup of milk, one cup of yogurt, or one and a half ounces of cheese. So again, if you're having yogurt, trying to buy that low-fat yogurt. So moving on to grains, like I said, we want to focus on the whole grains, choosing six to eight servings a day. And I know this can get tough sometimes, but just incorporating uh, rice, whole grain rice or brown rice. And then you can get whole grain tortillas, wheat bread, um, pastas also can be whole grains. So when you think about it, it might be a little challenging, but um, definitely pretty easy to get that in if you're watching your intake. Um, we also want to focus on the whole grains because they're high in fiber and other nutrients. So one serving is one slice of bread, one ounce of dry cereal, half a cup of cooked cereal. So this could be like oatmeal and then rice or pasta would be a half a cup as well for one serving. And nuts, seeds and legumes. These include almonds, sunflower seeds, kidney beans, peas and lentils. These foods also contain healthy fats in them. Um, and we're going to want to focus on having four to five servings a week. So um yeah uh, one serving of these is like a third of a cup of nuts two tablespoon seed or nut butter and then half a cup of cooked beans or peas so um, the beans are high in protein as well so a, a healthier source of protein in your diet and then when we're looking at fats and oils we want to focus on using olive oil um, when frying foods and vegetables meats into a frying pan instead of butter um, they're just, um, the olive oil is a healthier option than butter because butter is high in, um, the saturated fats. And one serving of fats and oils include a teaspoon of soft margin, otherwise a tablespoon of mayonnaise or two tablespoons of salad dressing. So salad dressing is something to keep in mind. Um, I know an easy way for me to get my uh, leafy green vegetables in is to have a salad and so I'm always trying to be mindful of the amount of dressing I put on that salad and then with sweets I always like to add this in here we don't have to cut anything out when we're trying to eat healthier but it's just in moderation so um, it's suggested to have five servings or fewer a week and they're okay in moderation uh, we got to treat ourselves once in a while so a serving could be a tablespoon of sugar um, jelly or jam otherwise a half a cup of sorbet and one cup of lemonade. So just keeping these foods in mind, trying to follow this model and um, the servings of foods will ultimately 
lead to a lower sodium intake. You know, um, other ways would be preparing your own food at home instead of eating more processed frozen foods that can also be an easy way to keep your sodium intake down. Yeah, and so to move on, sodium-free flavoring tips, because I know a lot of people like to season their food, myself included. So something we suggest for patients who tend to have hypertension or heart disease and other heart conditions is the Mrs. Dash. And so it's actually salt-free seasoning. So as you can see, I include the nutrition fact here. It has zero milligrams of sodium um, in a half, or excuse me, a fourth of a teaspoon. And also seasoning your foods with herbs and spices instead of using salt. So there's lots of different ideas out there. Um, you can use basil, garlic, just um, trying to avoid putting that salt on your um, meats and other foods to flavor. And then also another tip I like to put out there using garlic and onion powder instead of garlic and onion salt. Because again, that garlic and that onion salt can be high in sodium. Something we often don't think about when looking at sodium is what we do when we go out to a restaurant. And we're not always aware of how the food is prepared when we're ordering it or at certain restaurants. And it can be high in salt and also in turn high in sodium. And so just a couple tips for you to keep in mind, you can ask your food to be made without the extra salt and um, this can help lower your sodium intake. And then also not adding salt on it, on your food when it comes to the table will decrease that sodium intake. And then when you are paging through the menu or looking for some foods to eat, just being mindful of foods on the menu that could be high in salt. So it could be um, sandwiches, you know, with ham in them, or if there's some of those more cured meats on the menus, those can be high in salt too. And like I said, not adding salt to the food when it comes to the table. So I just wanted to summarize here overall tips to lower your sodium intake. So watching your portion sizes, um, this goes back to that nutrition label. Uh, where the serving was half of a cup and that had 800 milligrams in it. So just watching the um, foods and the portion sizes that we're consuming that are high in sodium, high in salt, that can help lower that overall sodium intake for the day. Reading food labels, again, like I mentioned, um, also eating more fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables tend to already be lower in sodium and they're also higher in many important nutrients. They're high in fiber and potassium, and those are overall good things for our body and our overall health. And then also removing the salt shaker from the kitchen table can help. Um, sometimes just having it in front of us can tempt us to add it to our food. So if we kind of tuck it away in the cabinet, um, it kind of removes that want to add um, extra salt to it. And then choosing lower sodium packaged foods. So there are some frozen dinners that are better than others, you know, lower in sodium. So just kind of taking more time at the grocery store, reading the nutrition labels and the nutrition facts can help a lot. And then also rinsing canned foods um, when you buy them and looking for that no salt added varieties. Um, so you can find that on the label, the packaging label. And then just another extra tip, physical activity can never hurt. And so it's good that we get 30 minutes of physical activity at least five times a week. So this would be physical activity that increases our heart rate. And so this would just be a good idea to add physical activity into your daily routine um, in addition to following that DASH diet, that dietary approaches to stop hypertension diet. And it also makes it more likely that you'll reduce your blood pressure. And so just to wrap things up, I um, just wanted to mention that as we get older, our blood pressure tends to um, rise more and more each year, which is why it's more important to watch our diet and really make sure we're not adding salt into our foods and that we're watching that daily sodium intake. So now any questions? That was excellent. So we do have a couple of questions. Uh, the first one being, as a recent graduate 
and current intern, have you found yourself teaching current dietitians some new information that you may have learned from school? Yeah, I think um, I have found that or they'll even come to me and uh, like, what have you learned in school kind of thing? Um, just to get updated information or if things have changed, they definitely come to me, which can be stressful at times because I think of them as the ex experts and I'm still learning, but I know more than I think I do. And so just being confident with um, telling them that and then yeah, we also use um, a nutrition care manual quite frequently, and that has a lot of good information on it. And so they're constantly teaching me while um, I'm learning, and then I'm able to teach them a few things once in a while or kind of put a different input on it. Maybe I learned this in school last year um, and kind of keep their brains thinking too. That's awesome. And we do have one more question. Uh, do you know what percent of sodium is in sweat and how or is there an easy way to track your needed sodium intake if you're a very active person? I don't know that answer to that question um, was how much sodium is in your sweat and that would be that's something very interesting um, if you are active here at the hospital Unfortunately, a lot of our patients have multiple conditions, and so uh, we really try to focus on that 2,300 milligrams or lower. And if they have other, you know, if their high blood pressure is very high or it's been prolonged, then we even try to lessen that sodium to try and help things. Um, so I don't know the answers to that question, but I could do some research and some digging and post it back on the comment section of the Facebook page if that's okay. That sounds excellent. Um, I think those were our only questions. So I want to say thank you so much, Paige, for taking time to speak on sodium in your life. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you again.